never miss a video from the Aesthetic Clinics and Dr. Debrat Shrom. My name is Dr. Debrat Shrom. I'm a facial cosmetic surgeon. I'm American board certified in facial cosmetic surgery. Currently, I'm a director of the Aesthetic Clinics. We run a chain of centers which are located in multiple cities in India. Today, with the advent of social media and the fact that all of us are using the cell phone more as a camera and less as a talking device, everyone or most people, even if it's not everyone, want to probably look better than they looked yesterday. That is what is driving the global fad of cosmetic surgery. It doesn't have to be surgery. It could even be non-surgical procedures. But if you stopped an average Joe on the street and asked them whether they wanted to look younger, fresher, more rejuvenated, the answer would probably be yes. It is this which is driving cosmetic procedures all across the world. India is actually the place where the, it's number five on the list of the cosmetic surgery procedures being provided all across the world. Cosmetic surgery procedures globally are not covered by insurance, which means that the average person living in the US or the UK would want to come to a place where the cost of cosmetic surgery is one-tenth or one-fifteenth of what it would be in their nations. This is where India comes in. The fact that most Indians speak decent English, the fact that there is a highly educated population which is available here, and the fact that Indian doctors are generally well-respected globally means that a lot of people would like to come in here for cosmetic surgery, and that's leading to the increasing trends of cosmetic surgery which are being seen in India on a daily basis. One of the major challenges of cosmetic surgery is that patients and doctors probably don't take them as seriously as other medical conditions. I've always wondered why. Because in the US, for instance, we see Botox and filler injections sometimes being done even in the malls in certain states. I find that ridiculous. The chances of infections with these procedures are just like any other procedures. So these procedures definitely need to be treated with the seriousness that other medical procedures are being treated. Unfortunately, patients tend to take it frivolously. There are Botox parties or kitty parties which are occurring in India. And at the same time, doctors are also taking it frivolously. All sorts of so-called doctors are performing cosmetic surgery. Accreditation is a massive issue. And that's why we have these un unfortunate incidences of people dying during a hair transplant surgery, etc. The objective to remember is, in a cosmetic surgery, we have to be even safer than a normal medical procedure. Let me tell you why. In a normal medical procedure, suppose I have a cancer of the jaw, even if I have a slightly deformed face post the cancer removal, I'll probably accept it. Because my major problem was cancer, that has got removed. Even if I don't look like I looked earlier, I'm grateful to be alive. But a cosmetic surgery patient is different. In fact, he's not a patient at all. He's a consumer. He's a normal person who would like to look better. Any normal person who wants to look better, ask yourself, what are the chances that you'll take a side effect? You will want to be 100% safe and have 0% risk. Therefore, for cosmetic surgeries, actually, we need to be safer than other surgeries because it's normal human beings we are dealing with those who don't even have any disease or infirmity. So from that perspective, that's the point where I think there's a big inflection point waiting upon us for this to change, become safer and be treated higher than any other medical procedure so that safety of patients and of the procedure remains paramount. The big thing about cosmetic surgery is that it's people with resources, which is like, which is money, and they are able to pay to look better, which also means that cosmetic surgery procedures can charge a premium. Because they can charge a premium slightly higher than the other medical procedures, typically there are people who all want to do it. So in the US, this is not only an Indian phenomenon. In the US, there are certain states like New York, etc., where nurses are allowed to do Botox. In India, there has been a furor over dentistry and some other allied specialties getting into cosmetic surgery. The challenge is not who should get into cosmetic surgery. The challenge is being clear about what sort of training is needed to get into cosmetic surgery. 
I am not here to say that only plastic surgeons or only dermatologists should do cosmetic surgery. I am here to say that cosmetic surgery needs to be a part of your curriculum. It needs to be taught to you. You cannot just go ahead and do a plastic surgery or a dermatology or some other degree and come tomorrow and start practicing cosmetic surgery. Think about how many surgeons in India when they were completing their residency or their fellowships actually did a hair transplant surgery. And if you have not been taught this, can you really replicate the results that you are supposed to replicate in this procedure? So the point for all regulators is to make sure that there are stringent accreditation criteria. It doesn't become a free for all where everyone is coming in and doing whatever they think is appropriate and thereby compromising safety as well as efficacy of the procedure. Ultimately, the credibility of the entire speciality depends on the regulators making stringent bylines on who should do what, how they should be trained and what will cons be considered a good outcome. I always knew I wanted to get into facial cosmetic surgery. And the way to get into facial plastic or facial cosmetic surgery when I was passing out was to either get into an ophthalmology or an ENT residency. Just like general plastic surgeons come out of a general surgery residency, because I wanted to operate only in the face, there were a couple of residencies which I had the choice of getting into. So I chose to get into an ophthalmology residency and then did fellowships in every area of the face to make myself better. My first fellowship was in oculoplastic surgery. My second fellowship was in facial plastic surgery. My third fellowship was in head and neck surgery. And then I got a fellowship from the UK in uh, oral and maxillofacial surgery. Ultimately, all of this culminated into an American board certification in facial cosmetic surgery. The American board certification in facial cosmetic surgery has been awarded, I am told, to only about 300 diplomate surgeons across the world. And I have also been told that I am the first in Asia to have garnered an American board certification in facial cosmetic surgery.